Hey you guys, Ed Bud here. I'm back with a 2K special for you. Happy holidays, viewers. I'm back with a 2K special for you today. We've managed to hit that magic 2,000 subscribers barrier. So we got there, 2,000 subscribers. It feels like only yesterday since we were at 1,000 subscribers. I think it's about nine weeks ago. So I'm absolutely over the moon. We managed to get there so quickly. And it's all thanks to that one person that always dislikes the videos. You know, as Seth Damore says, it keeps you humble. Yeah, you can't be all things to all people, can you? You can try very hard, you know, to make content that people really enjoy, you know, put your heart and soul into it, but not everybody's gonna like what you do. I'm just glad and I'm very appreciative that all of you that have subscribed up to now are enjoying the videos, you're enjoying the reviews. I really do appreciate your comments, your support. Beast, Mildred, Oliver and I really, really do appreciate it. So, to say thanks for all of that support, for all those new subscribers, it's time for a run and shoe giveaway. It's going to be dead, dead easy for you guys to enter. Please watch through to the end of the video and I'll explain exactly what you need to do to enter. I'm also running a vote at the moment to get some viewer opinion as to what you might like if you win. Um, at the moment I've got options up for the Pegasus Turbo 2, the Hoka Only Only Rincon, a shoe around a specific value of the winner's choice, and then there's just an option to say you love the channel. Please do check that out in the community section of the YouTube channel. But first, a race recap from the Western Christmas Cracker 10K. So at the weekend, took part in the Western Supermare Christmas Cracker 10K. It's put on by the Western uh, Road Running Club, I think they're called, something along those lines. It's a fantastic race. So I did it last year and I really wanted to go back, see if I could better my time this time around. So I think just over 2,000 participants took part in the Christmas Cracker 10K this time around. It was brisk out there and it was certainly windy on that North Somerset beach. Almost everybody was wearing festive costumes, apart from me. Bah humbug! I kind of had my reasons for not kind of wearing any costumes. <laughs> any, any additional clothing that you had on on that beach was going to get blown away or it was going to basically act like a bit of a windsock. So I'd encountered that course before and um, when I got up to the start line loads of memories were coming back to me from last year back in 2018 where I had a go at this race the first time out. Last time out it was chucking it down with rain, there was loads and loads of rain. I remember within about the first mile my feet were absolutely drenched. This time around the sand was more compacted, um, it was a little bit more of a sturdy surface and sturdy terrain to run on. I think temperatures were a little higher this time around as well, it certainly didn't seem anywhere near as cold out there. Uh, this time, uh, rather than wearing a t-shirt, I rocked up in the Oval Town Road Running Club vest, so I didn't want to go out quite as quickly as I did in the last instance of the race. I went out far too quickly and then paid the price for it when we got to sections of the beach, or at least stretches of the beach, where it was very exposed and the wind was coming right across at me. So that pacing is something I really need to learn. I'm being very conscious of that each race I go into. So the race kicked off around about 11 a.m. I set out on the first mile around about seven minutes, 27 per mile pace. I let the super speedsters just, you know, fire past me. I was quite happy with that. Um, I knew that as I got up to the second and then the third mile that things were going to be tough, especially with the wind the way it was as I was warming up along, I don't know what you call it, the as I was warming up along by the sort of side of the beach along the main sort of walkway, I don't know what you call it, what's the word, who knows, but I was warming up along there and it was serious, the wind was serious, I knew that it was going to be tough, I knew I needed to rein things in at the start to give myself half a chance of a decent finishing time. I didn't really need to navigate too many people um, during that first mile of the race. Uh, there were only probably six or seven that kind of overtook me, so I think I got just about into the right position um, to start the race off. I soon overtook some of them as well after their initial kind of burst of speed from the uh, starting klaxon had, had gone off. Um, I just drifted past them very, very easily, sticking to a nice, reasonable pace. That sand was mainly compacted. I had a quick look at it before the start of the race. Uh, I went with the uh, red, crimson red Vaporfly 4%. Might seem like a crazy idea on a beach race on sand, but actually they worked very well. They felt fine, had a decent amount of push off there. 
did think about using the Adios 4 at one point. I did see a couple other runners wearing them, but there were a huge number of runners wearing the Vaporfly 4%. So kind of felt that that was the way to go. The sound seemed to be compacted enough that it wasn't going to adversely affect me when I was utilizing those and it would give me a bit of an extra push when I was on the pavement and road areas. So a good solid start. So with the second mile, once you get to the end of the beach section, you turn off left and you've got a nice bit of respite, a bit of um, pavement and some paved sections that you can build up a decent amount of speed on. So I up the pace there to six minutes 40 per mile, so more towards my 10k pace. Certainly feeling good at this point. I think my choice of clothing was certainly a good one. Uh, there was one guy, Jester's Jesus, and I saw some Christmas trees. Uh, there was one other person dressed as a gingerbread man, and there was old me with my running vest on. And I think I've made a good choice. So certainly the wind wasn't having quite as an effect on me as some other people. I did look like some sort of modern day version of Ebenezer Scrooge though. Or should I say Ebenezer Shooge? Did you get it? That's a good one. That's a good one. I always like to be a little on the colder side. I think it's perhaps the, the Polish blood, but certainly I really uh, prefer colder temperatures for running than, than warmer ones. I dread those hot holidays, you know. I say sorry to my wife about that, but I just really, really don't like hot holidays. Nice and cold, that's the way I like it. Not quite as cold as you've got over there though, Monty. So that third mile brings the runners back to the sand. There's a long stretch on the sand at that point. Uh, so you sort of double back around the start of the course and then that's when the wind really hit. Never before have I experienced such a ridiculous amount of wind uh, during that fourth mile. I've lived on top of hills, I've ran on top of very steep castle battlements, but this wind was ridiculous. There was a real crosswind there, I think it was blowing west to east. And at the time all the runners were running from north to south, so really bad crosswind there. It was around about this point where I almost went over a couple of times, the wind was just so strong. It was, I was trying to kind of run and push myself into it, but it was kind of blowing me back the other way. And in the end there were several of us runners sort of huddled together as like a makeshift wind break, just trying to keep going. It kind of felt a little bit like somebody was sort of flicking me in the side of the face. There was sand and water kind of flying across and my ear was just really hurt. It was really painful actually at one point. Uh, the wind was kind of blowing so strong across. I think they stated there were 45 mile per hour gusts of wind and it was just coming straight out. It could have been even worse than that in fairness. And there was one point where I kind of felt really nauseous and really sick because um, the sound was immense. I'm really not making this up guys, it was, it was horrible. I did see a couple of runners kind of almost give up at that point. They, they really weren't enjoying it at all. I kind of was though. I think it makes me, uh, makes me a special kind of guy. So being tall, six foot three and very, very light. I was basically like a human flagpole. Sort of imagine a, like a bean stick with a running vest attached to it. That was me. My club vest was a flapping and I was just trying to keep going forward as best I could. I believe there's a golf course that runs along that section of the beach. And I can imagine players there having some real issues, you know, with that crosswind when that starts up. And I imagine you look like you've hit a really good shot and then it just flies off completely into the rough. Pretty big uh, bunker there, pretty big sand hazard um, just the other side of the fence, like the beach. So eight minutes 30 per mile on that fourth mile. It was horrific. So mile five and I was back on track. Well, road and tarmac actually, it wasn't track. The legs really welcomed that flat, harder terrain by that point. I was kind of had enough of this, like the old sand by that stage. And I managed to take a couple of other competitors at that point. Went through a housing area, um, relatively flat kind of area, through some housing. Lots of people out actually, waving and sort of urging me to go forwards. And then back onto a uh, long stretch of pathway that led back down to the sand. Right about six minutes 56 there um, on the other side of the golf course. Mile six, it stays on that pavement for a little while and then there's a sharp left turn which leads back down onto the beach and then you can kind of see in the distance the finishing line. So that home straight's a very, very long section which leads right the way down to the finish line underneath the pier. 
So on that last 0.3 of a mile, comes up a little long, probably because it's on the beach and GPS probably goes a bit crazy. I upped the cadence, I think I was up to about 183 or something by that point, I was really, really cooking. Well, cooking for me anyway. <laughs> and up that pace to about six minutes 13 per mile there was a chap i could see just ahead of me and i kept looking and thinking oh, maybe i can catch him and i don't know whether he slowed but i certainly really belted it the last kind of three four hundred meters because i can you can see the end right the way down and it just seems like a ridiculous distance but really happy with my finish finished really strongly those last two miles and that last sort of 0.3 of a mile, I'm really pleased with my performance. So finishing really strong, came in at 45 minutes and 40 seconds. So I think that was probably a good minute and 10 or something, uh, better than last year. But considering the conditions, I was actually really, really buoyant after finishing. That result was really, really good. I mean, it's a way off like a 10k PB for me. I think best for 10k was probably at the... Uh, Salisbury half marathon I think I came in at 42 something there so way off a PB but there are three things to consider with this race that actually mean that I'm making some decent progress with my fitness so first up the race was on sand now I looked around and people seem to suggest that running on sand is about 1.5 1.6 times harder than running on perhaps pavement or asphalt or tarmac so certainly improved strength there check number two the wind 45 mile per hour gusts are no joke and to be honest i was just happy to survive i was happy to keep going on that fourth mile it was really tough so that mental toughness check and three looking at equivalent times from last year i was really really impressed where i finished so i finished in 62nd place out of the 1995 competitors this year looking back at last year's results the people that finished around about that 60th position were about three minutes faster. So you can see there was a massive effect. The wind had a huge, huge effect on the results. Even the first place finisher, I think, was about a minute slower than last year. I think going back to our 100th position, I think there was about three minutes 30 difference. So certainly weather conditions had a very, very big effect on the Christmas Cracker results this time around. One of the keen viewers, Monty, hey Monty, mentioned that it's really good for me to look at this race as a strength building exercise in my half marathon training. And he's absolutely right. Building up that strength, building up that endurance, getting out there and testing myself, that's the true reason for this race. Building up that desire, building up that tenacity. <gasps> and some great swag as well. Great t-shirt and cool medal as well. So gonna be back in 2020 for that one for certain. So it's time to discuss that running shoe giveaway. We've hit that 2K subscribers. I'm absolutely over the moon about that. Thank you if you have subscribed. If you haven't already, you know what to do. So I've currently got a vote running on the community section of the YouTube channel. If you head over there, you can uh, enter into the vote. I'm just gonna have a quick look and see what the current standings are. Hey, 2012 now. Oh, wow, look at that. Hey, Falco, he's wanting to try out the Rincons. They're great shoes, Falco. I'm really enjoying those. Here they are. Need to get back out on these soon. Simon G, glad you're enjoying the videos. Josh Cheevers, he was going to vote for the Rincons, but he just wants to say he loves the channel. Alan Jang, I'll take you up on that one when we get to 10,000 subscribers. I want a 10K from you. Rohit Gawaka, I hope I've said that right. Glad you're liking the channel. Rayu Shizuka, I'm really glad that you find the videos interesting and useful. So at present, we've got the Pegasus Turbo. That's got 28% of the vote, so it seems like that's quite a popular choice. Uh, the Rincon's got 21%. Only 19% have gone for uh, Shoe of the Winner's Choice. Um, and then 32% of people just love the channel. So. Um, I think at the moment it looks like we'll be um, going for a Nike Pegasus Turbo 2 to the winner of the contest. Here's how you enter. Dead easy to enter, so we'll have lots and lots of entries. First thing you need to do is make sure you subscribe to the channel down here. And make sure you give the video a thumbs up like. Next thing you need to do is comment down below and let me know the name of my cat, the Shoe Guardian. And then lastly, you need to email at the email address on the screen right now. 
please let me know your YouTube name so I'm able to contact you um, if you are the lucky winner of the running shoe giveaway. There's going to be a backup prize too. There's a runner's up prize. I guess that's why runner's up prizes come from. Runner, runner up, yeah. You're the runner up. I'm going to have a £25 runner's warehouse gift voucher for the runner up. So the contest will end on the 15th of December 2019 at 11.59pm GMT. Please make sure that if you do want to enter that you've got your email in um, by that time. I'll be drawing out the winner and then announcing the winner in a video on Monday the 16th. I'll place all this information up in the description as well if you missed any bits of it. Just to let you know this contest is open to those in the UK, America, the US, all parts of Europe and also Australia too. Hope you understand that obviously I've got to ship this stuff out. And this isn't a sponsored giveaway. I'm doing this straight from me. There's no sponsors involved. So just to reiterate, if you want to enter, you need to subscribe, like, comment with the name of the Shoe Guardian, and then email me at the address on screen right now with your YouTube name so I'm able to get back to you if you are one of the winners. Please enter only once, guys. I take it on trust. Any multiple entries will be invalid. Just to let you know, YouTube doesn't endorse this contest in any way. It is purely down to me to fulfill the prizes. And all emails, uh, contestant names, YouTube names, whatever, will be deleted on completion of the contest. I won't hold any of that data. It will be completely deleted. Exciting times. Exciting times, certainly. So, hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please make sure you enter the contest. Subscribe, like, comment. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you.